From coast to coast, thousands of Canadians work every day to improve lives, build community, and provide support to the most needy, often without recognition or thanks. Vancouver's natural beauty often disguises the difficulties of life suffered by many inhabitants, including newcomers to Canada, who struggle to find a place in the community. Collingwood Neighbourhood House is one of a network of neighbourhood houses that exists uh, around the Lower Mainland. And they are really a hub of activity that bring people together in neighbourhoods to not only receive service, but just as importantly to be able to provide service. This particular neighbourhood house is a standout in the City of Vancouver because it has the highest number of volunteers. The work that this community puts together to bring um, you know, people together is tremendous and uh, it's, it's second to none. Our neighbourhood has one of the highest numbers of recently arrived immigrants uh, among neighbourhoods in Vancouver. We have a high number of refugees as well. So our staff represent that. So they come maybe as an immigrant and come as a volunteer, maybe come for one of our English classes. And then they see the organization, they think I'd like to volunteer here. So they get involved as a volunteer. And then maybe they get a part-time job here and it grows into full-time work. That's a common path here. Nadja came to Collingwood Neighborhood House after fleeing an abusive marriage with two newborn twin boys. The first time when I came to Canada, I was married. I left my marriage because of the because of the abuse. Well, at that time, I didn't have a job. I was just single mother with two children. There used to be this lady that she always used to tell me, "Hey, you're a single mother, have two children. Why don't you come? There's a free program where you can come, and there is free food, and they'll help you and your kids." But when she came here at first, she's very open about the fact that she came here because she could get food. She was raising two young children, twin boys. And then what happened was, through her volunteer work, she gained a sense of value. One day, I came and I think it was a Christmas dinner, and I just was so tired of just putting my resume everywhere and I couldn't find a job and I was so depressed and I just dropped off my kids in the daycare and I said, you know what, I'm going to the center to just help. The coordinator of the program was really like frustrated because, oh my God, the person who's supposed to cook the turkeys and make the dinner, and she just called in sick and what am I supposed to do? Then I'm like, okay, I can, I can do it. Then she goes, are you sure? Have you cooked for people before? And I'm like, yeah. Then I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> what did they do? <laughs> so I just cooked everything, put the turkeys, the ham and potatoes and all that stuff. So between one o'clock till 5.30, everything was done. I have to go pick up my kids. Okay guys, I gotta go. See you. Bye. Bye. I was going through a hard time and I didn't know it was hard for me that I didn't have a job in this time. I just had my kids and I was going through divorce and everything was a big mess. So I think once I walked in with the door with my two little children, I think these people gave life back to me. Because I just walked in and everybody stood up and they started clapping and they were just going like, thank you for the most beautiful food that you've provided. I think I looked at them and I looked at their eyes and I looked at myself and I go like, oh my God, this is where I belong. Although trained as an accountant, Nadja has found her purpose in the kitchen, feeding bodies and souls, and building community. I find out a lot of newcomers that come, they all come and, and the first thing that is the problem is the language. So when they come in, they're always afraid, okay, I don't speak English, so the first thing they say that they don't belong. But food is a universal language. People who work in social services organizations are often not recognized at all. Uh, but the Diana Family Foundation really does make a point. They're, they're leaders in recognizing the contributions these professionals make to the quality of life in our communities. We would like you to meet our friends who cooked the dinner for you today. So yeah. class for them. For when there is that kind of an external recognition, what happens is that the person feels that validation for what they've done, that it actually does matter, and it matters beyond. Um, the neighborhood house family, that it matters sort of out there <laughs> in the world. When you hear Nigel in the cooking, as you can in the background right now, there's a lot of laughter and fun. And what she's doing is she's forming those relationships for people. This is one of the people that I've met the first time I started the program. She's building the community through the work she does. I want to help new immigrants just to feel welcome because it was the way that I feel when I met Nigel. It's not like we choose to do what we do because we want to get awarded for it. We do what we do because we love to do it. And we do, especially for me, I do it from my heart. 